So on this video, what we're going to talk about is putting a lead cane border around a piece. Um, the, le the lead cane that I'm going to put on is a U-channel. It's a little bit wider than the zinc that we put on the other piece in one of our previous videos. And this is a good thing because it can hide if your outside border is not perfectly um, round or perfectly square the way it's supposed to be. If you have a little bit of undulating on the edge, it can hide a multitude of sins in order to take a little bit wider channel. So again, it's going to be a U-channel. With lead, you always need to pre-stretch it, which I've already done. But one thing you want to do is you just want to take your FID and make sure that the channel is open all the way down. Sometimes when you stretch a piece of lead, it can squeeze the channel closed. So you just want to make sure all the way down it's open. You also want to try and keep it as straight as you can possibly keep it until you start bending it. Okie doke. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take a perimeter of your piece. So what you're going to do is you're going to take this huge piece of cane and you're just going to start bending it by hand, using, holding it by the ends and just start bending it by hand and you're going to over bend it so that you come all the way around 360 degrees of your circle and then just keep going, keep bending. And again, notice I'm not snapping it on, I'm just using this as a gauge to get a circle. The area that you're holding onto at the very ends, those are never going to go into a nice curve because you are holding that. So what you can do is give yourself a tool to hold that, it gives you a little bit more leverage, and then just kind of watch what you're doing and bend that into a nice circle so that you don't have a flat spot. Once you've gotten to that point where you have an approximate bend, then you can start to fit it around your actual circle. So again, I have a, a T, a square corner, and I'm going to start in this piece. This is the bottom down here, so I think I'm going to start in the bottom. I'm going to put my piece in. It can be a little bit tricky to get it started. And I'm just going to push it against this board so that it's nice and stable. Then I'm going to start to go around, work my way around. If I don't snap on all the way immediately, I'm not going to stress about it. I'm just going to try and kind of get it manipulated around. Again, if you haven't watched the other video that we did with the zinc, one thing that I did prematurely to, on this one is I flattened all of these outside seams so that this would slide on a little bit easier, the cane that is. So when you're looking at this, you'll notice that it's black on the inside because that's already been, been patinaed. And then it's silver because I've um, soldered back those seams. If you're doing this and it's a brandy new piece, you can just not solder about a quarter of an inch out so that the area where you're going to be snapping this came on is not soldered so it's not adding to the girth, the overall girth of the piece. Now when I bent this, it flanged up a little bit, so I'm going to try to get that to flatten out again. Mm. So the glass that I'm using on this is an antique glass, which is quite thick. So I'm going to manipulate the channel a little bit. This is just a lead knife. And I just have it put inside the lead channel 
and then I'm kind of pulling back on it and lifting that channel a little bit each time. And what that does, it, it gives it a little bit of a scalloped edge, but once we get it on there, we can just push that back down again. What it's going to do is it's going to lift it up so that I can get this extra thick antique glass in there. In most cases, you guys, you will not have this same issue because you'll be using um, eighth inch glass. This glass can go anywhere from eighth inch to three sixteenths to thicker. Okay, so that step where I opened up the channel, um, if I had not done that, we really would have been screwed here. So don't forget that step. Okay, so we're in on this side. We're in at the bottom. Okay, I have to step over here and just open this more again. All right, get in there. Gotta open a little bit more. Okay, and then once I get it to this part, I'm about, say, two-thirds of the way, I'm going to start taking some horseshoe nails and putting the flat side against the edge of the glass. You can put as many or as few as you want. You're just doing this so that you're absolutely sure it doesn't move on you. I'm going to come back around to the front. Now I'm going to make my connection right there. So I'm going to take my um, tool that's just going to give me some leverage to hold that because I don't want it to be flat as it goes in to meet that. I want it to be a continuous circle. Make sure that's open. And again, I didn't, uh, this is the one spot down here that I couldn't get my knife in to open it. So I'm gonna open it manually with these. These are just grossing pliers. All right, so now without removing the nails, I'm going to shift this. I might have to remove one or two. And what this is helping me do is this, it's helping me get the came the rest of the way onto the edge. And I'm shifting it so that I can see where I'm going to end up. So how do you decide exactly how to cut this end? You look at it, you figure that, okay, it's snapped on all the way down to here. So you know it's going to have to be cut back a little bit. So start with like maybe an eighth of an inch, three sixteenths. Cut that back. Make sure it's open. and then start to snap it on. If it needs to get cut back a little bit more, you can cut it back a little bit more. It's always a good idea to start with it a little bit long, and it's just a tiny bit long. It won't snap the rest of the way on unless I cut that back a tiny, tiny bit. So I'm gonna pull it off the edge of the glass. Um, 
just going to cut it back really just a smidge. I don't even think, well, yeah, I need to cut it back more. These are fan out lead snips. They look like a wire cutter, but they're not. They're really, really sharp and really, really nice to use for cutting lead. Okay, so that snapped on the rest of the way. So now I'm just gonna take some more nails, put those on. Again, the flat side is towards the edge. Beautiful, all set. So now I'm just gonna go back with my fid or I can use a lead knife and just flatten down the areas that got fluted. And once those are all flatted, flattened down, then we're ready to solder. Okay, so if you take a better look at it, you'll be able to see that it is nice and round and it meets right down here at the bottom. It should have met exactly on a joint, but it's not. But you know what? I'm going to leave it there anyway. You wouldn't want to have that um, meeting, let's say, right in the middle of a piece of glass because then you have to have an additional um, solder point. With this one, all you have to do is you just have to extend this joint where it's going to connect right to there where you're going to have your bottom solder, jo solder joint. So that's it. The next step will be soldering it. Okay, so now we're ready to solder. So lead came does have a tendency to, um, if you get too much heat behind it, it'll melt down. Um, a meltdown is when your iron actually goes straight through the came. Um, it sounds really scary and it's a little bit intimidating, but um, you know, it only happens once in a while. So what I usually do is before I start on my piece, I take a piece of came, the same profile that we're using, and I do like a little test on it just to see what we got. So see how it melts on the came, it flows nicely, but it's not going through it. If I held it in one spot for a long period of time, oop, there we go, that's what's called a meltdown. We don't want that to happen. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be soldering and then I'm gonna be um, moving pretty quickly. Maybe I'll turn my iron down a little bit. Um, I'm gonna flip it over. That was hot. That was really hot. Look, it's my flux is bubbling. All right, and we're using uh, paste flux. Again, paste flux is really good for anything that has any kind of dimensionality to it because it stays right where you put it as opposed to the liquid stuff, which goes all over the place. So with lead came as well as with zinc, when you're attaching these outside edges, you want to use the paste, it's much easier to use. And it's not gonna be corrosive. Okay, so once we've got the right temperature, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna flux the areas where there are seams coming out to meet the cane. Okay. Once we've got that done, the first place we're going to attach is right on that seam. Just a little bit of solder on that seam. Notice the angle of the iron is pretty high. I'm directing it down with the wedge of the iron. And then I'm just moving the iron around in a circle to make the attachment. The attachment to the seams 
is going to be very similar to what we've done before with zinc. So you're going to hold the iron up high. You're going to start on the interior of the seam. You're going to come out to the cane. Just kind of kiss it and off. Bring it up to the outside of the piece of cane. Kiss it and back it off. Notice the angle of the iron is high, you guys. Don't hold the iron flat. This gives you a bead as well as it gives you a nice connection without having a huge connection. Kiss it, move it back. The kiss happens here, watch. So hold it high, come out. There it is, there's the kiss. Let's do it again. So I'm going to go all the way around. This is going to get boring. Okay, so once you get back to the beginning and you've gone all the way around, give it a quick look to make sure that you've got everything. You'll take all your nails out, you'll flip it over and do the exact same thing to the other side. 